the African Water Tower, Ethiopia. Ethiopia is endowed with 12 cross-border rivers and many tributary rivers and lakes. This is why she is given a name, the Water Tower of Africa. Nevertheless, this status has not benefited Ethiopia in any meaningful way. Though blessed with such plenty, when considered in light of its growing population and increasing demand for its waters, the benefits have diminished over time. Due to deforestation, Ethiopia is experiencing rapid drought and vulnerable to adverse climate change. A reason, consequently some of its lakes and springs have dried up. Take for example, receding lakes and those filled with soil residue and water hyacinth. For centuries, our low-tech mode of farming and likewise our agricultural-based economy have remained consistently weak. At the same time, the nation's population has grown to become the second largest in the continent. Totally dependent on nature's generosity, the nation has remained enslaved to seasonal rainfall levels forcing the country to depend on global charities. Ethiopia has not been able to use her water resource through mechanized farming to get rid of poverty. The fact that it has not been able to use its water resource has also made the country vulnerable to expansion of desertification. Because of the degradation, Ethiopia is experiencing the attempt to take advantage of its plentiful rivers has been difficult due to heavy and deep soil erosion and resultant residues. Bringing back the green Ethiopia and ridding her of deeply rooted environmental and economic challenges is a present duty for the current generation. This is why every Ethiopian is called to participate in this historic Green Legacy campaign. We have planned to plant 4 billion tree seedlings this rainy season. All Ethiopians must put their fingerprints to make this initiative a reality. We're going to plant 200 million tree seedlings in a single day during the National Green Day. I call upon all Ethiopians to take part in this grand initiative. The national campaign is here for every citizen to heed. Last year, 4 billion trees were planted under the same Green Legacy campaign. This year, in 2020, the goal is up to 5 billion trees. It is the highest responsibility of higher education institutions to be part of the solution by conducting problem-solving research and facilitating research-based interventions. Universities are well positioned to select and prepare indigenous, varied and suitable seeds for the campaign. The first educational institutions can conduct soil studies in all parts of the country, forming the selection and appropriate use for the surrounding topography. Ministry of Science and Higher Education and its dedicated universities have already demonstrated their commitment by planting nearly 4 million trees in different localities. Exemplary milestones have been registered by universities in the Amhara region where heeding Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed's call, they're working together to rid Lake Dana of its devastating and expansive water hyanth while developing numerous mountains with dense trees to mitigate soil erosion and deforestation, particularly along rivers that are tributary to the River Abai. For an entire month, 
These universities took part in the Green Legacy campaign by planting thousands of trees at, among others, Guna Mountain, Choke Mountain, Beza, and the infamous Samin Mountains National Park. Their actions are expected to yield rich dividends in short order. Ministry of Science and Higher Education has adopted and is currently developing Adulala Mountain, a 25-hectare area located in East Shoah Zone. This year alone, 35,000 trees have been planted there. Other higher education institutions have similarly taken the responsibility of developing large pieces of land locally by planting trees and preserving areas from animal and human intrusion. These activities will continue until Ethiopia returns to its original glory. Where its lands and valleys turn green again. When reforestation succeeds, when the landscape returns, Ethiopia's climate will get better. Under such conditions, erosions will subside and clean water will fill our dams, eliminating piles of silt from depositing. The population will then soon rely on more electricity rather than firewood, preserving our forests from being cut down for daily sustenance. With ample energy resources, our standard of living and quality of life will upgrade as industrialization takes hold in our beloved Ethiopia. It can also create job opportunities for many. Once our hills and mountains are covered with dense trees, our agricultural industry will transform using modern energy sources. Ethiopia will no more suffer from drought and famine. Farmers will be enabled to use advanced irrigation systems to harvest twice a year, even three times a year depending on local conditions. Ordinary citizens can then enjoy the fruits of a strong, and sustainable national economy thanks to additional renaissance dams that the country will be able to build this is why we must all participate in the green legacy campaign by planting and cultivating trees and plants where we are The Ministry of Science and Higher Education and institutions that are accountable to the Ministry will continue to lead the way by spearheading research activities and providing meaningful community service. Ministry of Science and Higher Education will become the model par example in creating Green Ethiopia. Ethiopia plants. Drought and desertification will disappear. Erosion will end. Ethiopians will enjoy the successes of their great Renaissance Dam. Ethiopia's endangered indigenous medicinal plants will flourish once again. Fruits will be plentiful. Our most vibrant flora and fauna will bountifully sprawl over our precious land. Using all water resources, Ethiopia will return to be the real water tower of Africa. Ethiopia plans and will become green again. Mm -hmm.